There is nothing like waking up from a good night's sleep connected to a sleep apnea machine. The realization that you are a mortal human being. Realize life is short and you've got to get out and live. Photographs like these don't just happen. You have to make a conscious effort. You have to get up early in the morning. Have that cup of coffee. You have to start with a plan. And the plan is to get the perfect photograph. And that's normally when everything comes unstuck. It's like wild animals have a sixth sense. They just know you're carrying a camera. They know you need a photograph. And they just run. They're skittish. They don't like you. They don't want to be near you. And it always seems to be when you have a camera in your hand. Any other time, it's like they're posing. But the moment you have a camera... But I digress. The plan is to get photographs of zebras. The equipment on my trade, a skidonk, tripod, Fuji X-T4, 400 millimeter lens, power bank, and a lot of patience. Let's be honest, photographing zebras in most environments is really quite simple. So I like to just think of things about zebras while I'm walking through the felt. The spiritual energy of the zebra reminds us to value the differences in each other, to celebrate the rich tapestry of our cultures, and to recognize the interconnectiveness of all beings. And that sounded like a mouthful because it was, but I promised myself I'd include something smart and something that shows my sensitive side in this video. So there it is. Done it. Knock it off the bucket list. Everybody thinks wildlife photography is just rocking up with a camera and clicking away. It's not. 99% of it is sitting and waiting, deciding how you're going to approach the animals to scare them the least. Because once they sniff you or see you or hear you, they're gone. They'll run for it. So it's trying to get as close as possible. Despite having a long lens, you're never close enough, trust me. If you're a photographer, you know that. I'm seeing with a zoom of my iPhone 13. And this is what my camera's seeing. Hmm. 4K. Hmm. That's what I'm seeing. And if you want to know what I'm seeking with the naked eye, something like that. Yeah, it's scary. You always get the sense that they're watching you, that they're looking at you, smirking, laughing. It's, it's just a sense you had because it's, you know it's not true. But you always think, they think, what's a stupid idiot doing? What we're trying to do is stalk. I'm just going to spin around so you can see there. Behind me, yeah, over there. You're not seeing them, yeah, well, it's because they don't want to be seen. Well, actually, they don't care. I think, I think the only way to describe this is a, is a park run on steroids. I mean, I must have done seven or eight kilometers already walking around. I know if you take a look at me, it doesn't look like it. But yeah, you gotta follow these guys wherever they go. And I'm following them on foot because I can get closer to them in the car. But you just gotta look at this terrain. It ain't car friendly. I hope you've enjoyed this little journey I've taken you on. A little insight into my life. Um, an insight into photography in Africa. I'm not a fantastic photographer. I'm not a fantastic videographer, but I'm hoping I'm showing you a little bit of what it's like to be in South Africa to take photographs of wild animals. No, not everybody can do it. If you stay in a big city, you won't see animals like this. But if you're lucky to live in a small town, there are places you can go to find the beauty that is nature. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. If you take nothing away from this other than that I can press a shutter button and I can press record on a camera. Just take away the beauty that is Africa.
leave you with this solitary wildebeest standing guard as everyone else flees, ready to protect the herd, ready to protect everyone under his guard until all are gone. Only then does he leave.